Metabolic phases can be divided into different phases depending on when the last meal was taken. So we have digestive phase or absorptive phase which is basically within 2 hours of uh, taking a meal because during that time absorption is taking place. Then we have interdigestive or post absorptive phase that lasts 2 to 4 hours after meal. Then after this phase that is 4 hours after meal the phase of fasting starts. So we have different levels of fasting depending on how much duration has passed when the last meal was taken. So we have first is early fasting which is from 4 to 16 hours. Then we have uh, fasting that is 16 hours to 2 days of the last meal and both of them together form the early starvation phase. So early fasting and fasting phase we can also say that 4 hours to 2 days is the early starvation phase. Then we have phase of starvation that is 3 days to 24 days of the last meal and that is the intermediate starvation and greater than 24 days that is advanced or prolonged the stage of starvation. Now we have divided it into different stages because in these different stages different metabolism takes place. That means body's needs for fuel are being met by means of different metabolic uh, uh, cycles. Okay, so what are these cycles? Let us see what is happening in each of these phases. So before we go into what is happening, we should be very clear of two fundamentals. One. The target is to maintain blood glucose levels greater than 60 gram per deciliter because there are certain tissues in our body which depend solely on glucose. So this glucose level has to be maintained greater than 60 gram per deciliter throughout the phase of fasting. And second is to conserve body protein because proteins are the ones which are responsible for the body function. So we should not deplete all the proteins of the body if the structural proteins of the body are broken down, then it will be impossible for body functions to be carried out. And we will see that in different phases, basically there are three different phases of protein depletion. First, there is rapid depletion phase and the proteins which can be easily broken down that are broken down in this phase rapid depletion phase that is the labile protein breaking down phase and these include uh, like um, proteins of the intestinal secretions okay then that is one example then there is greatly slowed depletion initially fast breakdown of proteins then proteins are conserved and then finally when nothing is left in the body when all the fat storage of the body is used up again we have rapid depletion of the protein stores and that happens shortly before death and in this basically the stable proteins the structural proteins of the body are broken down so now let us go into each phase of fasting and see that how the body's fuel needs are met in each phase. Just remember here that all tissues preferentially use glucose. When the glucose is available, all tissues use glucose and there are exclusive glucose users as well. And these include brain, red blood cells, renal medulla, intestinal mucosa and there basically anaerobic glycolysis is going on and uh, whichever cells of the body do not have mitochondria depend on anaerobic glycolysis and in these cells amino acids and fats cannot be used as fuel because they are always metabolized aerobically. Fine. So first phase of fasting is early fasting that is 4 to 16 hours. Just in the interdigestive phase or in the post absorptive phase glucose is available right. Now in early fasting phase that is 4 to 16 hours have passed when the last meal is taken. Now the glycogen breakdown starts okay. In our body when we eat excess glucose is stored as glycogen and when this glucose is not available in the blood then glycogen is being broken down again to glucose and that is known as glycogenolysis okay glycogen being broken down to glucose and there is approximately storage of 70 grams of glycogen in our body out of which one third is stored in liver and two third is stored in muscle 
and this stored glycogen can provide energy for approximately 16 to 24 hours only that is why you see the phases of fasting so first 4 to 16 hours glycogen will be used for uh, providing glucose to the cells right and this breakdown of glycogen to glucose is brought about mainly by two hormones that is one is epinephrine and second is glucagon okay so as the fasting phase starts the levels of epinephrine and glucagon increase in the blood and obviously insulin levels go down because the blood glucose levels have gone down and blood glucose is the main stimulator for secretion of insulin right so insulin levels decrease epinephrine increases glucagon increases and these bring about the breakdown of glycogen to glucose right plus epinephrine also starts to act on fatty stores by means of the beta 3 receptors so beta 3 receptors generally we see doesn't have any other function only epinephrine by interacting with the beta 3 receptors causes lipolysis so lipolysis just starts fine so that is early phase of fasting what happens after 16 to 24 hours so now after 16 hours to approximately two days that is the phase of fast protein depletion and this is the phase where gluconeogenesis starts right new glucose is being synthesized gluconeogenesis right and how this new glucose will synthesize see glycogen is not available now it is all depleted now the protein stores which are there the labile proteins which are there they will be broken down and two main amino acids which are important for gluconeogenesis are alanine and glutamine so these are utilized for synthesis of new glucose right and this formed glucose is used as a fuel for main glucose users of the body that is brain rbc renal medulla intestinal mucosa for others see glucose is now going down we don't want other cells to utilize glucose instead they should switch on to some other fuel as their main source of energy so we have uh, fatty acids which are produced by the breakdown of fat which is stored in adipose tissue so fat breakdown occurs and it is broken down into fatty acids and glycerol glycerol is used again for the synthesis of glucose and fatty acids are used as fuel for heart and muscle basically all extracerebral tissues start using uh, this fatty acids as their source except the ones which are dependent on anaerobic glycolysis okay so in this stage of fasting that is 16 hours to 2 days a lot of new glucose is being synthesized and because of this lot of protein breakdown is taking place remember that and also remember that fat which is being broken down it is generally not a source of glucose why see fat is being broken down into fatty acid and glycerol and further beta oxidation of uh, fatty acids produces acetyl coa right acetyl coa and this acetyl coa to enter into the krebs cycle it should combine with oxaloacetate and then it will form citrate right but because of gluconeogenesis which is going on this oxaloacetate is being shunted to that particular pathway and we don't have much oxaloacetate available right so that is why this acetyl coa cannot enter into the krebs cycle instead now when more and more fat breakdown takes place more and more acetyl coa is going to form and that is going to lead to the generation of ketone bodies which we are soon going to see okay so fasting 16 hours to 2 days there is switching of the fuel from glucose to fatty acids for heart and muscle and for other tissues which are solely dependent on glucose we have gluconeogenesis occurring and one more thing happens here that because of protein breakdown there is increase in urea production and urea needs to be excreted in urine okay and for excretion of more osmoles there is increase in water loss as well so in this phase of fasting we see water requirements increasing because more water loss is there right and there is gluconeogenesis as well now what are the hormones responsible during this phase mainly glucagon which has increased in the previous phase right so that is going to increase the beta oxidation of fatty acids and also there are glucocorticoids what do glucocorticoids do they do two main things 
one this switching which you are seeing switching to fatty acids for uh, fuel for heart and muscle how it is occurring because glucocorticoids inhibit the peripheral utilization of glucose okay very important glucocorticoids inhibit the peripheral utilization of glucose and they act on the cells such that the enzymes responsible for fatty acid utilization increase understanding so they are switching the machinery of the cell so that they are now better able to use utilize fatty acid so that is the second thing glucocorticoids switch the machinery of the cells and they prevent peripheral utilization of glucose fine moving on to the next phase of fasting that is from third day to seventh days of fasting now from third day to seven days of fasting is a protein conservation phase as i told you before that initially there is a rapid protein depletion and then there is protein conservation phase so in this what is going to happen you see that brain now starts using ketone bodies okay so it has switched from main glucose user only glucose user to using ketone bodies as well right now two third of brain energy comes from these ketone bodies because ketone bodies are uh, being formed by beta oxidation of fatty acids and conversion of acetyl coa to ketone bodies and these ketone bodies can easily cross the blood brain barrier and they will be utilized as energy so that is why the need of gluconeogenesis is going to decrease right and hence now protein breakdown is going to decrease so once protein breakdown decreases the formation of urea molecules is also going to decrease and loss of water is also going to decrease so now water requirements also decrease okay water requirements also decrease then we have fats fats obviously they will be break down into fatty acids and glycerol and there will be lot of formation of ketone bodies this will lead to acidosis because ketone bodies are acids and there will be accumulation of hydrogen ions now body takes care of this also how now the role of kidney comes in where kidney causes gluconeogenesis so gluconeogenesis occurs in two main organs liver and kidneys and here the renal gluconeogenesis starts where glutamine is converted to glutamate and in the process ammonia is released this ammonia can bind with the hydrogen ions and which can be secreted as ammonium ions so these are various adaptations which are occurring to starvation so what are the adaptations which occur to prolong the starvation one is brain starts using ketone bodies so there is protein conservation there is decreased water loss as well then uh, to take care of the acidosis renal gluconeogenesis is occurring which is forming ammonia where hydrogen ions can uh, bind and ammonium ions can be secreted also bmr also reduces bmr decreases by approximately 20 to 25% so thus reducing the energy requirements of the cells so this was the adaptation in prolonged fasting and which is a hormone which comes into play now see the previous hormones are already there now one more hormone is added into the list and that is increase in the growth hormone okay and growth hormone has a protein sparing action so you see my video on uh, growth hormone physiology where i have talked about that how if these metabolic end products are being uh, released like amino acids then there is increase in the growth hormone and this uh, growth hormone basically increases protein synthesis okay so growth hormone has the protein sparing action so what are the hormones in sequence which we saw initially there was epinephrine glucagon then there was glucagon glucocorticoids and then finally we have growth hormone which is coming into play now what happens after 7 days of starvation this response which we have seen of fat breakdown can continue as long as fat stores are present in the body and this can last up to 3 months right after that when all the fat storage has been utilized there will be rapid protein depletion and ultimately leading to death okay and it is represented in this graph this graph is given in guyton where x axis shows weeks of starvation and y axis shows stored food quantity and you see here initially the carbohydrate source that is glycogen is used right glycogen is used and uh, within 24 hours it is depleted then you see here that uh, there is increased uh, protein 
breakdown along with fat breakdown but later on this is stabilizing okay not much protein breakdown is occurring but once the fat storage is used up then there is fast protein breakdown and this will ultimately lead to death so that was all about the physiology of starvation thanks for watching the video if you liked it do press the like button share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel physiology open thank you